Hello and welcome to Nithrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and in this video we're going to learn how to play the Red Cathedral Contractors expansion from Dever Games, who were kind enough to give us this uh, review copy. This is not a standalone expansion, you would need the base game to play the game. And here is how it plays. Set the game up as usual with the following changes. Remove this resource style that grants one recognition point and replace it with this resource style that grants one permit. Then take the five standard dice and add this specialist's die and set them up as usual starting with this permit tile. Then remove these two types of workshop tiles. These are used in a three and a four player game and replace them with these tiles. Again, include these ones only if you play three or four player game. Then place this Grand Duchy of Moscow board next to the game board. Place all these specialist tiles in the bag, shuffle them and randomly place five of them face up on these five spaces of the Grand Duchy of Moscow board. Then shuffle these six city tiles and randomly place one tile face up at the top of each of these cathedral towers. Then take the remaining city tiles and place them face down on the corresponding cities on this Grand Duchy of Moscow board. These regions are then not available in the game. Then each player takes one standard player board and then one extension of the same color. Then take these six contractors and when you play with this basic side of the player board, place four banners on these spaces and the remaining two banners in this area of the extension board. Each player also receives one permit and that's the end of the setup. In the base game there are three standard actions you can take. With the first one you can claim a cathedral section, with the second one you can build the cathedral section and with the third one you can acquire resources from the market. Now the contractor's expansion adds the fourth one, sending a contractor to hire a specialist. When you decide to take that action you will take the leftmost contractor from your extension board and place it in one of the regions on this Grand Duchy of Moscow board and gain one of these specialist tiles. Now let me explain how this action works in more detail. So first of all you take the leftmost contractor from your extension board. That may unlock a bonus. You have to apply that bonus immediately. Then place that contractor to any available city on this Grand Duchy of Moscow board. There are six cities or city areas here. They are delimited with these lines. So this is the one, this is the second one, third one, fourth, fifth and Moscow is the sixth one. If there is a city tile face down placed in the city area, that city is currently unavailable. So in our example, the yellow player may only place this contractor in these four regions. Then after choosing a city area, pay the number of permits equal to the number of contractors in that area now, including that contractor you have just placed here. So in this case we have four contractors here, which means you have to pay four permits. So return these permits from your personal supply to the general supply. Then in addition to the permits, you have to pay two coins then choose one of those two specialists which are next to the city where you placed your contractor, let's say this one, and place it face up on your player board. Then take the bag and draw the new tile and place it face up on the empty space on the Grand Duchy of Moscow board. If you don't have or don't want to pay those two coins when hiring a specialist, the tile you gain has to be removed from the game instead of being placed on your player board. Furthermore, if you already have a specialist tile on your player board and you take the contractor's action and gain the new tile, you have to discard the first tile face down without activating its ability 
and replace it with a new tile. Obviously you can only do that if you pay those two coins. If you wouldn't pay those two coins, the original tile would stay in its place and the new tile would be discarded. If you would place your contractor in Moscow, you can choose any of those five available specialists, in this example even this one. Then refill the empty space with the new tile from the back. This new die, the black specialist die, works exactly in the same way as the white die or the die of a player's color. That means you may pay coins to advance the black die further when acquiring resources. In addition, when you use the black die to acquire the resources, you may use this specialist tile. You can find the explanation of all these symbols in the rulebook, but they are pretty self-explanatory. But after you use the tile, unlike the tiles in this workshop areas, this one has to be flipped face down and placed next to your extension board. Don't discard these tiles, just place them nearby, they will be scored at the end of the game. And that means these tiles are only for one-time use. The next time you take the contractor's action, you can place a new specialist tile here for two coins and then activate it when you move the black die. At the end of the game, you will score the sets of different specialist tiles and the number of these prestige points you get depends on the number of unique tiles in each set. In this example, this set contains four unique tiles, so you would get seven prestige points. For this set with two unique tiles, you would gain two prestige points. Now, let's take a look at these city tiles. They have been placed here at the top of each tower at the start of the game as part of the setup. Now, whenever the tower is fully completed, Take the city tile, which is at the top of the tower, and place it face down on this duchy board on the matching space, and that indicates that this city area is no longer available and no player may place contractors here. Then each player who has contractors in that area will get the number of recognition points, so those are these small points, equal to the number of the contractors in that city area multiplied by the number of their banners in that tower. In our example, the yellow player has two banners multiplied by two contractors, so that would be four recognition points. The red player has one contractor, one banner, so that's one times one, only one recognition point. If the green player would also have a contractor here, that player would score zero victory points because they would multiply one contractor by zero banners in the tower. And one more clarification, if you would build your sixth cathedral tile and at the same time you would complete the tower, you would first score the city points. So let's say again in our example it would be four recognition points and only then you would score three prestige points for triggering the end of the game. Then when all players finish their last moves and there are still some towers not completed, the contractors in those cities don't score any city points. There are a few more additional rules that we need to talk about. First, these permits are not stored in your inventory. You have designated spaces on your extension board, so you can have maximum six permits. And any time during your turn, you may spend a prestige point to gain one permit if you need to do so. Then at the end of the game, when you score victory points for leftover resources, count the permits together with your resources and coins. And finally, let's talk about new guilds. During the setup, you will always keep these three basic guilds in the game, and then you may replace this clergy guild with a new guild from the expansion. That means you will always have only one new guild from the expansion. Some of these guilds from the expansion can actually be used even if you play the base game without the expansion. Because they only use the components from the base game. Some guilds can only be used if you use the expansion. And these guilds usually use some key components from the expansion like permits in this case. Then there are other guilds which can be used with the base game 
but they may require some additional components from the expansion, these diamonds for example in this case. But if you would use this guild card, not only you need these diamonds, you also need the permits. So this card also has this letter C in the bottom left hand corner, which means you need the full expansion. These brick makers, for example, only use these few tokens from the expansion. So again, you can easily use them with just the base game. Similarly, these foremen only use this piece from the expansion. And again, you can use them with the base game only if you wish so. And you can find the explanation of all those guilds in the rulebook. So that's how you play Red Cathedral Contractors Expansion. If you have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can support the channel on the Patreon page or by clicking the thank you button under the video. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Beret and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash